Let's finish up the diagnostic test with some geometry and a little probability and statistics. An isosceles triangle has one side with length 6 and the other side with length 10. What are the possible perimeters for this triangle? Well, we know it's isosceles, so two of the sides have got to be equal. So one is 6 and one is 10. Well, in one case, the other could be 6, in which case the perimeter would be 10 plus 6 plus 6, which would be 22. In the other case, one side would be 10, and the other matching side could be 10. So in this case, the perimeter adding up the sides would be 26. So our two answers are 22 and 26. What is the circumference of circle O? What is its area? So we know its radius is 4. Um, so we want to know the circumference. So circumfer circumference is 2 pi r, which in this case is 2 pi times 4, which is 8 pi. And generally for the SAT and for this test, just leave it in terms of pi. No reason to multiply it out. What about the area? Well, we know area is pi r squared. So here it's pi times 4 squared, which is 16. So we get 16 pi, which is your answer. Arc AB has length 5 pi. What is the area of circle P? Well, we know that this wedge, which has an arc length of 5 pi, is 45 degrees. Now, we know that 45 degrees, if you look at the 360 degrees of the circle, is 1 eighth of the circle. So if this wedge is 1 eighth of the circle, this 5 pi must be 1 eighth of the circumference. So 5 pi times 8, right, because there's 8 pieces that are each 5 pi, will give us a circumference of 40 pi. Well, what does that mean? We know that circumference is equal to 2 pi r. In this case, 40 pi is equal to 2 pi r. Do a little dividing. We get r is equal to 20. Well, now we want the area. We know that the area is pi r squared. So in this case, pi times 20 squared, which is going to give us our 400 pi, which is our answer. What is the area of the shaded region? Leave your answer in terms of pi. So first, let's find the area of the whole rectangle. Well, that's just going to be 6 times 15, which is 90. Now we want the area of the circle. Well, we know that this whole thing is 6, which means a radius is going to be 3, which means the area of the circle is pi r squared, which is 9 pi. And to get the shaded area, we just do the, the entire big thing minus the circle. So the area of the shaded is just 90 minus 9 pi. A rectangular prism has length 5, width 6, and height 2. What is its volume? Well, volume is length times width times height, which in this case is 5 times 6 times 2, which is 60. What is the volume of the cylinder? OK, well, we know for cylinders, the volume is pi r squared h. So let's just put in our information. Pi 4 squared 10 to the math, 165. Line 1 passes through 6, 2, and the origin. What is its slope? OK, well, we can use our slope formula here. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's do 2, right? Our y2 is 2 minus 0, because this is the point 0, 0, over 6 minus 0, which is 2 over 6, which reduces to 1 third, and the answer. What is the slope of the line parallel to this? Well, let's go ahead. Let's rearrange this to get it into mx plus b form so that we can get the slope. So we can get 3x, 3y equals, move the 2x over, minus 2x minus 2. Divide everything by 3, we get y is equal to negative 2 thirds x minus 2 thirds. Now we don't care about the y-intercept, we just care about the slope. And we see here that the slope is negative 2 thirds, so a line parallel would have a slope equal to the slope of this line, so this negative 2 thirds. Perpendicular, on the other hand, would be the negative reciprocal. So we negate it, make it positive, and flip. So this becomes 3 halves. That would be the slope of a line perpendicular. Given this list, what is the mean? Well, to get the mean, we add them all up. So we do 5 plus 10 plus negative 2 plus 10 plus 6 plus negative 2 plus 1. The total equals 28. We divide it by the total number of numbers, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the average is 4. What is the median? Well, to get that, we got to list them in order from least to greatest. So we do negative 2, negative 2, 1, 5, 6, 10, 10. This is a seven numbered list, so the fourth number, 1, 2, 3, 4, is our median, and there it is. That's right in the middle. What is the mode? The mode is the number that appears the most, and it can actually be more than one. There can be more than one mode. So let's see, 10 appears twice, as does negative 2. So actually, 10 and negative 2 are our modes for this question. Gilligan has cards numbered 1 through 10. If he selects one of these 10 cards at random, what is the probability that he selects a card with a prime number? Well, we know it's out of 10, so we can put 10 on the bottom. We just need to figure out how many um, choices satisfy the requirement that it's a prime number. Well, how many primes are there between 1 and 10? 
Well, there's two, three, five, and seven, right? Those are the only primes. So we've got four choices out of the 10. So it's four tenths of probability, which reduces down to two fifths. The pie part chart shows shown below, um, or try, the pie chart below shows the breakdown in class grades. If 70 students got C's, how many students got F's? Well, we know that 35% of the class got a C. So if 35% of the total is 70. We can use this word in a word set to come up with the equation, right? 0.35 times the total is equal to 70. So we do a little rearranging. We get t is equal to 70 divided by 0.35, which is 200. So the total number of students is 200. We want to know how many got f's. Well, we look at the, the pie chart and 10% got f's. So what is 10% of 200? Well, it's just 200 times 0.1. And that gives us 20. So the answer to this one is 20. Okay, so tally up your rights and wrongs. What you want to focus on is circle the ones you missed and also any question that you have any other issues or confusion about. And what you want to do next, once you finish this diagnostic, is go to the math bootcamp videos and math tactics videos and work through those first to hit your weaknesses. Once you've worked on your weaknesses and plugged in those holes, then you want to go back to even the ones you're strong on. Uh, so even if you didn't get it wrong, you still want to study it to make sure uh, that you hit those questions and you got everything down. So we do want to prioritize our weaknesses, but that doesn't mean we ignore our strengths. So make sure once you've worked through the videos that um, you want to work through first because they're questions you got wrong or they're topics you're confused about, then you want to go ahead and work on the other videos just to make sure you've got a well-rounded um, skill set.